Hey, welcome back to How To Clinical Research. I'm Eric Lambert, and uh, today we're going to talk about the equipment and supplies needed to open and run a clinical research center. So I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. Uh, this video is really for those who maybe are a physician or an entrepreneur and want to open up a clinical research center either, either out of a private medical practice or renting a medical space and doing it from scratch. So some of these items here may already be available, let's say if it's a private medical practice, versus if you're building it from scratch, you may need to buy every single one of these items that I'm listing here. But they're going to be categorized in a couple areas. So for one, we're going to go over patient room equipment and supplies. And then we're going to go over lab equipment and supplies, as well as office equipment and supplies. So I will link everything down below. So be sure to check out the links. Uh, to purchase each of the items that I'm listing. And of course, those links do help out the channel and I would appreciate it if you use them. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first you're gonna need a patient exam table. Okay, these uh, items cost about $1,850 per unit. And I recommend having at least two of these to begin with. Uh, and that of course depends on how many patient rooms that you have. So this price may vary. Uh, but you do want one that has some sort of power to it uh, that may have some heating features for the patients. Uh, so the one that I recommend will be shown here as well as listed down below in the description, just like everything else that I'm about to mention. Okay, so the next item would be uh, the exam table paper. So uh, you do have to have a liner that goes over the exam table, uh, something that's disposable, of course, and I'll link that down below. Uh, next, you'll need an EKG machine. So the EKG uh, that you typically need for every clinical trial is a 12 lead EKG. You should only need one of these. Uh, you typically don't need more unless you have a really large office space and you're seeing a lot of patients, then you know you can keep buying more of these items. But to begin with, I recommend just having one. So next you'll need a vitals cart. A uh, vitals cart costs around uh, $567. The price may vary, of course. So the vitals cart will have things on it, such as blood pressure monitor and temperature, etc. You can buy it all together in one vitals cart, or you can buy each of those items individually. Uh, for simplicity, I, I recommend getting just the vitals cart, and that's a little bit expensive. You're going to cost uh, around $567. Next item would be a uh, mechanical or digital beam scale. So I'll link both those options down below. The digital course is gonna be much easier and quicker to use, uh, but you do wanna have one that is able to measure someone's height as well. So when you're selecting them, make sure that you get those options. You'll also need a uh, otoscope. So the one that I recommend is by Welch Allen. Uh, this is something that maybe the physician you're working with may already have, uh, but if not, uh, you will need to purchase one of these and those run for about $600. Uh, so next would be disposable patient gowns. Uh, you'll need to have a good amount of those. So uh, the packs that I have linked here come uh, in counts of 50. So I, re I recommend getting at least two of those. Uh, next you want to have an instrument stand. So this is to kind of hold things that you might need while seeing a patient, for instance, uh, supplies for collecting blood samples. So next item would be the Perel dispenser and the hand sanitizer refills. Uh, I'll link those here. Uh, depending on your office space, you'll need to have those pretty much like at the entrances and in the hallways between patient rooms, etc. Maybe in the lab as well. So kind of on your office space will determine how many of those that you're actually going to need. Next, uh, as I kind of mentioned before, you're going to need blood collection supplies. So you're always, you're always going to need butterfly needles. They come in packs of 50 typically. So to begin, I'd say you want to have at least two uh, of those packs. So starting around like a hundred of the butterfly needles. Uh, you'll also need tube holders. So uh, those are BD vacu vacutainer, uh, 250 packs. So you'll need a tube rack in different sizes, small and large, as well as tourniquets. Uh, those are disposable, of course, and alcohol pads to prep for the blood draws, as well as bandages, cotton balls, foam armrest, cohesive bandage wraps, sharps container. Sharps container is important uh, whenever you are done with taking blood samples. You, of course, want to put all the needles in the sharps container. Uh, and, you know, of course, you're going to need services for uh, disposing of the medical waste and 
uh, you're going to have to have a vendor for that. All right, then you're going to need other items such as tongue depressors, of course, gloves. I recommend nitrile gloves because some people have allergies to latex. And I also prefer uh, the quality of nitrile gloves. They, to me, are better. And also Clorox wipes. Okay, so especially now during COVID, you have to make sure things are sterile. And uh, Clorox and Purell are always a must and in high demand. So you might run into issues, of course, finding these items. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the next category of supplies needed, and that's gonna be lab equipment and supplies. For one, you need a min-max thermometer. Uh, the one I recommend is by DigiSense. Uh, I'll, I'll post it here. But uh, this one, you want it to be traceable so that it actually records on, on a daily basis and archives uh, the min and max temperatures for every single day. And that's important when uh, storing uh, different biological specimens, or investigational drugs, uh, you have to record those temperatures. So that is an absolute must. And the amount that you need really, of course, depends on your office space as well and how many studies that you're running. But I recommend getting at least three to begin with. You also need a centrifuge. The one that I recommend, that one is good for most blood samples that you're going to need to process for different protocols. It should handle almost any protocol that you are conducting. However, some protocols, of course, are going to have special requirements for processing blood samples. And uh, every so often, you might run into a scenario where you might need to have a centrifuge that just spins uh, tremendously fast for maybe a certain blood sample that they're processing. So for situations like that, you can go ahead and then purchase another uh, centrifuge down the line whenever you run into that scenario. But you can also request the sponsors to provide that equipment to you temporarily while you run those studies. Uh, because those are uh, kind of really specialty items that aren't going to be used that often. So it may not be worth actually purchasing, but you do need to have a centrifuge uh, and of course link down below. So next would be a uh, freezer. Okay, so you need to have really two freezers. One is a minus 20 degrees Celsius freezer and the other one is a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer. The reason you need both is because depending on the types of samples that you're processing, some need to be stored at cooler temperatures than others. So some will be ambient, some might need to be minus 20, and some might need to be stored long term while you're collecting samples, and that's why you need the minus 80. So you do need both. Uh, the minus 80 does get expensive. So the one that I link here for minus 80, it goes by the sizes that you might need. So I think the lowest uh, or the smallest size is somewhere around $3,500 and the largest size I think is around $12,000. So just be mindful of what you think what you think you might need in terms of volume space, uh, because if you're processing a lot of blood samples that might need to be in the minus 80 freezer, uh, you might need to go for the larger um, uh, size of freezer. So just keep that in mind in when you're deciding which one you actually need. The minus 20, I don't think you need that large of a minus 20, uh, typically, you're freezing samples just for the day in that freezer and then taking them out. So you don't need a large one. Uh, you just need uh, maybe like a 3.5 cubic feet. I forgot which one I was looking at, but I'll, I'll link it down below for the one that I think is best for you. You'll also need some sort of storage cabinet that is lockable. So you can either uh, install locks on cabinets that are currently in your office space and or purchase an additional uh, storage cabinet that's lockable. And this one is by Sandusky. It's really great for storing just ambient things. So if you just have extra supplies that you want to put in there or even investigational drugs or lab kits that you're using for the studies, it's, it's a great storage space and secure. You'll also need stools with wheels. You'll need those for the patient rooms and the lab. So depending on how many uh, rooms to see patients you have, uh, will determine how many of these stools that you'll need. And uh, you'll need plastic pipettes, packaging tape and rubbing alcohol. And all of that, of course, is for processing and shipping the samples that you're collecting. The last category are uh, the office equipment and supplies, okay? So for this, you're gonna need waiting room chairs, uh, something ideally that is uh, easy to sit in and get out of. So obviously, you know, a lot of people wanna buy something modern, but you have to think about the patients for, for these waiting room chairs. A lot of the patients are elderly and might be morbidly obese. So you have to make sure you have a chair that can fit a wider person as well as a chair that someone who's older can easily uh, grab onto to stand up and sit down. So keep that in mind when you're choosing these, these waiting room chairs. Uh, you'll also need a printer. I recommend a pretty 
powerful printer. You don't need to get those like printers that you see in corporate offices that just run really fast. I don't recommend starting with those because they're really not needed right away. So I, re I just recommend a high-end printer that has a fast print rate that's you can typically get at like Best Buy or Staples or, or Amazon, of course. So uh, the one I recommend is always by HP, so I'll link that here. Uh, then you'll need a, a storage device of some sort. So uh, I recommend a very large uh, external hard drive for this. So this would be something like a four terabyte because you're going to need to store a lot of documents as you conduct these clinical trials and you don't necessarily want to save those directly on your computer because of course it's going to affect your computer speed and life. So it's best to store that on something external uh, and something that's able to back up uh, into the cloud maybe. So uh, I'll link the one that I recommend down below. You'll need laptops. You can either go Mac or Windows, of course. I recommend using Windows because a lot of the uh, programs that you might be using or will be using uh, for different sponsors and CROs will uh, require usually uh, a Windows-based uh, computer. Okay, so you can you can obviously run Windows on Mac if you wanted to. Uh, there's videos on how to do that, uh, but usually you want to go with Windows. Um, the Dell. Latitude laptops are pretty good laptops. I'll recommend those here. Uh, you'll need office cabinets, obviously, if you're building out the office space from scratch. So uh, I recommend going to IKEA for that. It's usually the easiest um, and cheapest cabinets to put together and, and have installed. So you'll need a really good router. Uh, I'll link that here. Uh, you need to have really good Wi-Fi that can really reach the entire office space that you're in. So depending on the size of office space would determine, I think, the type of router that you would need. But I'll put a powerful one linked down below here that can uh, serve for most people. You should have security cameras installed. I like the Arlo Pros a lot, so I'll link those here. Uh, you'll need plenty of filing cabinets for every single office space that you have. So however many desks and staff that you have, they, they will all need filing cabinets. Again, I recommend getting those from IKEA. Most or almost every sponsor is going to require that you have a backup generator. So if your building that you're in doesn't already have backup generators for the building as a whole, then you should buy your own backup generator for your office. Uh, so the one that I recommend uh, will be linked here. It's going to be an electric one, of course, not gas power. So just one that you can charge up. Uh, and I believe that's by Nexus. You'll, of course, need a uh, reception desk. So IKEA, of course, has reception desks and office desks, office chairs, all from IKEA. I recommend going that route. You're going to need a labeler, uh, especially when you are trying to be organized. You have to label all of the patient binders, uh, all of the cabinets, all of your supplies, so everything's easy to find. You're going to need, obviously, standard office supplies, printer paper, pens, binders, dividers, post-it notes, post-it dispensers, a st a staplers, a paper shredder, uh, office phones, of course. You're going to need paper clips, a desk organizer kit, and a beverage fridge is usually needed. And this uh, fridge will normally be kept in the waiting room. So uh, when your patients come in, they, they can always get like a Coke or water or juice, whatever is best for them. So you typically want to carry a wide variety of drinks there. Uh, obviously, there's patients that are going to be diabetic, so they're going to need something not uh, sugary and so forth. So be mindful of, of how you stock that for your patients. Then you're going to need um, some basic other things like toilet seat covers and uh, a toilet seat cover dispenser. So that should be installed in the bathrooms. And of course, your bathroom should have handles for patients to hold on to because, uh, again, many of them will be elderly. So uh, in total, based on, you know, what I estimate here was uh, based on an office space of about 1,800 square feet uh, that has uh, how many patient rooms? One, two, three patient rooms, uh, a lab, and uh, two other offices. So for a space like that, uh, and the quantities that I recommended in, in here, uh, total to be about $22,700. Okay, so there is a cash investment here. If you're building this office from the ground up, you of course need to buy everything that I listed here. If you pair with a physician and make the make the company, the research center out of their private medical practice, you won't need to buy a lot of these items here. You'll pretty much just need to focus on uh, the items that they don't have. Uh, for instance, maybe the freezers and the centrifuge, uh, maybe some different lab equipment that they're missing. Um, uh, the min-max thermometers, right? There's going to be certain items that they don't have that you're going to have to purchase, but 
there's a lot of other things that you wouldn't need to buy, such as maybe just standard stationery, standard medical equipment and supplies. All of that will be already at uh, the physician's office. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Feel free to ask questions down below in the comment section. If there's something that I missed that you uh, are wondering about, just uh, feel free to ask. I will respond to you. Also, if you're looking for consulting services, don't forget that I have a consulting company called Lone Bear Industries LLC. You can go ahead and email me. Uh, my email will be listed in the description. You can go ahead and go to my website, contact me through there as well. So uh, plenty of ways to message me, uh, even through Instagram. Again, if you want consulting services, feel free to contact me. My consulting company is there to help. Everything, of course, would be done through contract. If you are looking to build a clinical research center, I can help you with that. If you already have a clinical research center and are looking for some advice on how to get studies, on how to get doctors, on how to train staff, etc., I can answer all of those questions. So again, my uh, website is linked down below. Contact me there, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Bye.